Okay. All right. Uh, my name is Amy farber and I have been associated with the pageant since I was eight or nine years old. And the most amazing part was that um, my whole family was involved in it at some point in time. It was actually held on my father's land. So it was a really exciting time to be growing up in Walnut Grove and to be a part of Fragments of a Dream. Um, I tell everybody that I kind of grew up in a fairy tale childhood. I got to experience so many things um, that I, you know, I see kids these days that would never have had. Uh, so it was just an amazing, amazing time in my life to be a part of. I would, I would throw into that as, as you mentioned the family. I mean, everybody in your family was involved. And frankly, if uh, if your family wasn't involved, there'd be no pageant today. Without Big Al in the picture, I think it would have faded away. But what- I do know that Dad was very passionate about it and wanted um, to be involved from the day from day one, and never even hesitated to say, "Let's do this on our land." Right before that, we had talked about um, building a house on that piece of property. And that went away very quickly when Fragments of the Dream came to life. And he wanted to be so involved with that. And I think me being daddy's girl, like I wanted to be with him. I wanted to do what dad did. And it was just really exciting to see how passionate he was about it. And then becoming Mr. Kennedy and just the time that he got to climb up the steeple and put the cross on will forever be. I think, imprinted on everybody's heart that saw the pageant, and especially those of us that were in the pageant, uh, because it was such a special moment. And, and, you know, I can't leave your brothers out of this either, you know, because Tom and Brad, you know, they were out there with the hammers and nails. We were out there to the last minute. Was, you know, what was the highlight about being Nellie or being uh, in Fragments of the Dream? And it was the the amount of time that I spent with my family. And so I got to spend a lot of time with my big brothers during that time and my sister. And it was just a really um, great way. I got to look up to them and got to admire their um, fearlessness and their courageous to do what they did. And it was just um, that's probably the, the greatest memories I have. Um, just being a part of that with being able to be with my family. And can you remember anything in particular that you either really enjoyed or didn't like about either being Nellie or Anna or Mary or any of or the, or your assistant directing right. time? Too? Right. That was super exciting. I was sad that I grew out of Nellie, but uh, it was exciting to be um, the assistant director and see that side of it. I really did enjoy that. Um, And I don't know if you knew, but I wanted to be a drama major when I went to the University of of Oklahoma, but they told me that it was two full-time jobs, being a volleyball player and being in the theater. And I had to make a choice and the choice was made for me since one was paying for my schooling and the other one wasn't. You know, I was, I was excited to be um, Anna. Would I have loved to have been Laura that year? You know, that's, that was what my goal was and my dream I didn't get to be that, but I got to be second best the next year, which I thought um, Mary, but really uh, the part of Nellie was so fun. Um, It was different for me because I, you know, mom raised me to be a very nice young lady and to be very considerate and thoughtful and kind. And so then you get a part like Nellie, which was completely opposite. And she was a spoiled brat and she threw temper tantrums and she was mean to the kids on the playground. And that was very outside of my comfort zone, but so fun to play a part that was not your personality. Um, Being able to work with Shirley Nockmoose and Dean Fouillon and Wayne, it was just, it was just an awesome experience and um, one that I cherish in my heart. Even though you didn't get to be a theater manager in college, you also did uh, in high school. You were Calamity Jane, were you not? I was. I was. I I loved all of the high school productions. Um, I was sad to see that come to an end. Um, but yeah, that was such a fun part. Um, and I just got to, I got to really be outside of my comfort zone in that. And I um, so loved the musicals and being able to sing and act at the same time. Coaching has taken quite a toll on my ability to sing. 
Um, I used to sing the national anthem at a lot of athletic events, but now it's like I wouldn't even want to try because it's it's gotten very crackly from yelling at kids and cheering on kids over the years. Well, but being a coach, isn't there a lot of theater involved in that? Oh, too? Absolutely. Absolutely. There is. I have to fake it sometimes when I want to act like I'm really having a good time with those kids. But I do mental training now. I have my master's in sports psychology. And I tell kids all the time, you got to fake it till you make it sometime. You got to act like you, you're confident. You got to act like you believe in yourself. And so I, I, I use some of the things that we learned when, when I was a kid, actually, with some of the kids that I work with now. Uh, that is a, that's a very good thing. Tell me a little bit more about your, you're kind of a personal trainer and, and a coach uh, of coaches. and uh... Got my undergraduate degree at the University of Oklahoma in physical education sports studies and played volleyball. And I was fortunate enough to be offered the assistant coaching position when I was done playing. And so I stayed on there for four and a half years and got my degree in sports psychology. And then I became a head coach at a small division one school in Chicago. And then I was a head coach at Oral Roberts University. And then mom and dad started to get sick. And so I um, stepped down from that head job and it took an associate head job at Iowa State, which was much closer to mom and dad. So then I took a head job at Drake University in Des Moines because I did not want to move out of the area. Being close to mom and dad was super important to me. And then my little girl said to me one day, mom, you've only ever seen me play soccer once. And it really broke my heart. So I said, I can coach volleyball anywhere, but I can only be in my daughter's life once. So um, at that point in time, I started my own training academy in Iowa. And that led me to Dallas to, to take a team down there to compete. And the director of Austin Juniors um, saw me there and she happened to be my scorekeeper when I was the head coach at Oral Roberts. And she said, I have a position down here I'd like to hire you for. And so we took a leap of faith and moved to Austin, Texas. I got COVID really bad in 21 um, on my honeymoon of all places. But what I was figuring out during that difficult time of COVID is that so many of these kids were struggling with the uncontrollables, like the things they they were stressed, they were depressed, they were focusing all things that they had no control over. And so I really was mentoring them through that time. So, so I started my own company in 21 called Game Face Mindset. And so now I train all of the athletes at Austin Juniors um, multiple times throughout the year, and I have private clients. And then I train volleyball throughout the year as well for private lessons. Um, so it's been it's been very rewarding and very challenging. And um, it's I, I feel very blessed. I'm going to switch from the serious to do you remember any lines from the you know what? I was thinking about this throughout the weekend. Um, <laughs> And now that you put me on the spot, I have to think because it was the one where um, I was standing on a bench and I was screaming and I I had the line all ready. And then now that you asked me, it just kind of slipped my mind. Um, I'll start you out with it. Willie, I like yes. you better. Say, say it one more time, Bill. Willie, I liked you better when you didn't, didn't understand. understand your Bible verses. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was, yeah, that was one of my favorite ones um, because like he what threw a worm at me and I'm, I had to like get on the bench and start stomping on wow. there. But that was one. And then the, the whole scene with the pie was Shirley um, or Mrs. Olson, um, us chasing her around the mercantile. That was super fun. Um, but yeah, that was probably my, my favorite line is when I had to stand on top of the, the pew and hope it didn't tip over while I was stomping on top of it, yelling at Lily. You speak very highly of my father, Bill, but, um, I really believe that, uh, you really keep the love for Laura going. And, and I meant that in my message to you is, is if it didn't have you behind, you know, like doing the interview with Tom last year, that was phenomenal. But you know, it takes somebody like you who's very passionate about it and does have a gifting for that to keep it alive and to keep people involved in it. I know that dad would be turning over in his grave up in heaven going, you know, what's going on? How come there's nobody in the uh, up on the steeple putting the cross up? Um, so kudos to you for all of your time and effort over the many, many years that you've been involved with it, but especially to keep it going and 
um, keep the heart of Fragments of the Dream going. That's very kind. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. What advice might you give to them about being involved in not necessarily just theater, but I mean theater, but uh, also I mean a- any activity, uh, whether it's in elementary or high school? In life, uh, I think every kid should experience it because one, it teaches them to be fearless. It teaches them to be courageous. It teaches them to get out of their comfort zone. Um, it's it's something bigger than yourself. And then when you're a part of that with all of the other people that are involved in it, you make relationships that last a lifetime. Uh, it was, I think it was such a great, um, just many life lessons through that time. Um, so I would highly encourage everybody young and old to put themselves out there and do that because there's so many great memories and uh, life skills that you learn through going through something like that. 